Hello, parents and teachers who may be watching. Welcome to Creating Math Ahas for Parents. I'm Dr. Sandy Atkins, Sandy. Greetings from Florida, where we're still recovering from Hurricane Helene, and we're expecting Hurricane Milton in the next 72 hours or so. But I wanted to make sure that I got this video out. This was one that was requested, was one on fraction division, as were the time videos that were posted in the last couple of weeks. Also, thank you to those who have subscribed. I hope you'll consider subscribing and click on the notifications bell so that you'll know when other videos become available. I really do appreciate you doing that. If you, um, if you would, click like. If you like the video, consider sharing it with others also. So in this video, I'd like us to think about fraction division. And you notice that I have some different looks of division. Now, this is really what's happening when we make fractions like one half, one fourth, one third, right? It's that one divided into an equal number of pieces. And then we're gonna also look at fractions like these two types. And notice I have the fraction kit down here that we're going to be using. I'll use it for some modeling, but I'll be drawing pictures that are linked to this. If you want information on making a fraction kit, there are videos available on that. I'll try to put the link below in the comments section. Also videos on just how to create fractional units. So I hope you'll take some time to look at those too. Now, years ago, I was really trying to figure out how to help children understand fractions. And I was working with a third grade teacher and I went in one morning and I said, you know, I think fractions are really very tightly linked to division. Can I try some things? And she graciously let me try. So what I'm showing you today are things that I've been using for many, many years to help children understand fractions. There are things that you may be seeing your children do in their classrooms. So let's take a look at a couple of these. Again, I will primarily draw the pictures, but I'll show some of the modeling of the kit to begin with. Part of what we want to think about with division are two of the models for division. And I'm just wanting to write that down to point that out to you because you'll hear the language. One model is about separating into equal groups. Okay, partitive division we talk about, separating into equal groups. The other that we're going to be using is, it's sometimes called quotative division, a measurement division. It's pulling off equal groups. It's measuring off equal groups. So I'm going to write it as that. And my language is different depending upon which one I look at. And what I mean by which one I look at, which of those expressions. So for example, if I'm looking at this problem, I would read this as one and a half separated into three equal groups. And you may be able to picture how you would do that. If I'm taking one and a half, so here's with my kit, right? And I'm going to separate that into three equal groups. How much am I going to put? Oh, I've got more than one hole here, hey? How much will I end up putting in each of those groups? So we take one and a half. We separate it into three equal groups. Think of how much we're going to put in each group. Right. So in each group, I'm going to end up putting a one half size piece. So one and a half separated into three equal groups is going to equal one half. Now notice this is different from when I learned division, we would change this into an improper fraction, a fraction with the numerator greater than the denominator. And then we 
rewrite it as a multiplication problem. And we would do a multiplication problem and then we would convert it back into those pieces. In this technique, we want to use our understanding of division and what it means and extend it to fractions. From that and from the patterns, we can learn and talk about the relationship of division and multiplication, right? But as we're starting out, understanding the meaning of division is where we're going to start. So that's where I'm separating to an equal number of groups. I, that's how I tend to think of it. Okay, I can put it into these three equal groups. Now that other problem that I showed was um, one and a half divided by one half. This one I'm going to read using language associated with this way of thinking of division. How many halves are in one and a half? It's a measurement idea. So if I have my one and a half here, what I'm going to do is I measure off how many of these, this size piece can I measure off here? Well, one, two, three. So when I separate, when I measure off that, here's my whole, here's my half. I measured off, so I was able to get one, two, three of them. So the answer is three, okay? So we're going to keep in mind that language, okay? How are we doing it? Now let's go back to the ones I had on the front page. How would I read that one? A whole separate into two equal groups. Here's my whole, right? If I can separate into two equal groups, rethink of my whole as the two halves, how much will I put into each group? Well, I end up with, what if I take my whole and separate it into four equal groups? How much would be in each group? Or four equal pieces? What if I took the third I'm sorry, the whole and separate into three equal pieces. I jumped ahead, didn't I? Now see, once I separate it, and that's that first part for helping our child understand, I start to look at patterns and what do you notice? And also I can start to see that half of two is one, a fourth of four is one, a third of three, is equal to one. And so we're looking at multiplicative inverses here. So our ongoing theme with all of these videos are give the children those experiences that help them understand through the patterns of what they have done. They start to come up with those rules and generalize those rules and act as other mathematicians have act, acted. So I want to spend a little bit more time. Let's just think about this one. What if I had, oh goodness, two and two thirds, and I wanted to separate it into three equal groups. So again, we typically have your children either start with the model and then draw the picture, or they could go directly to the picture. I apologize for these not being closer there, right? I'm gonna separate into three equal groups. Now, once I do that, see, it's easy with the holes, because when I separate those into three equal groups, see, from here, I put a one-third piece and another here, and then I put another one-third piece in. But what am I going to do here? I only have two pieces with the two-thirds. Hmm. But I could separate these each into three pieces. What size piece would that be? 
one ninth. So here I'm going to put one ninth in each one. And here I'm going to put another one ninth in each one. Now, when we've looked at adding the fractions, right, I've shown you some ways to think about that. But right now, what we have in each group is we have two thirds that we need to figure out a way to put together with two one ninth pieces. Okay. Now, we learned a technique for doing that equal group, right? That, um, sorry common, least common uh, denominator, least common multiple, getting common denominators. But what we want to do is find the same size pieces so that we can add them. And one thing we can see here, just if I extended this up, how many one ninth pieces fit into a two thirds piece? So I have six one ninth pieces that I'm going to combine because I can see that here, right? I extend those lines, that's equivalent. I'm going to combine with two one ninth pieces. So in each group, this will be eight ninths. Okay. But in each case, I can do simpler problems where it's going to go nicely. I'm not having to get that common counting unit, that common unit fraction piece. And then I can also work with what I understand and the pictures to help me combine. So separating into equal groups. One side of division of fractions is a mixed number or a fraction divided by a whole number. And whether I'm doing it like I did here or I'm doing it like here, that's how I'm thinking of it. Now, the other side is doing these problems that would be something like, I'm going to keep the two and two thirds, but this time I'm going to ask how many thirds are in two and two thirds. Now my starting picture is not changing, but this is the measuring it off. I want to figure out how many one third pieces I can measure out of two and two thirds. Well, here would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Okay. And I could have taken my whole and my two thirds, my two holes, and measured these off, right? Just like I did here. I could have measured them here but I drew it and you'll see the children doing pictures like this and they're measuring it off. Okay, so there are eight measurement. And I can do this. Now, if you notice, I've made sure that I have a unit fraction here that I'm separating in the same denominator. That's how we typically start out with your children on how to do this division of fractions. Let's go a little bit more complicated. What if I ask, let's go back and do um, three and a half. This time I wanna know how many one fourth pieces are in three and a half. Now, if you would, pause the tape and try drawing the picture yourself as I'm starting. And then come back, pause the video. You can tell how old I am when I said tape, right? Pause the video and try drawing the picture of what you think will happen, then come back and check, okay? But if I'm wanting to find out how many one fourth pieces and three and a half, and you notice how I stack my units. Well, cut, I practice cutting. So if you look, I have four in each hole, right? So I've got 12 here, 13, 14. Now in this case, I still have a unit fraction, but this is a multiple of this. So it's a smaller, I'm cutting into smaller and smaller pieces. And we do those with your children, getting them used to that. 
So still unit fractions, numerators of one into a mixed number and just seeing how pieces fit together. Now, as I said at the beginning, this is how I start teaching fractions with third graders and fourth graders sometimes. They don't see it written like this. I just write out the words, how many fourths are in three and a half. They measure it off and they get very good at seeing how pieces fit inside each other. It also is the foundation for equivalency. Two one-fourth pieces is equivalent to the half. So I can do that. Now, let's get a little bit more complex, okay? And just think of another type. I'm gonna go back to our two and two thirds. And the last problem we did was how many um, thirds are in two and two thirds. I've done everything with unit fractions, but this time I'm going to ask how many two thirds pieces. And this again is the flow I tend to do with your children. We do more problems and get them comfortable, but it's kind of the flow for the types of problems. So we get really good with unit fractions. I might throw this in. Now, this picture, again, if you want to pause the um, video, draw your own picture, come back and check. So I've got two and two thirds pieces. And I'm going to share with you the, the pictures I've seen. I've had some children, they tend to all start by cutting into thirds. And then some will do shading. So they'll see one, let's see, one, two, three, and four. Okay. So they shade sets of two thirds. Now I could do it again. Let's say I have two and two thirds. Okay. Again, they almost all start with the same picture, cut it into the thirds first, and then they might do this. So they still end up with four sets of two thirds come out. Okay, I'm measuring it off. I'm seeing how many come out. Okay, so we do those types and have them play around with ones where it is an even multiple. Notice how the problem's rigged a bit, right? But I'm still building, I'm adding a little bit more complexity. Each time they build comfort, we go a little further and we can start to play around with these ideas more and more. Okay, now I know from earlier that four times two thirds is going to give me the two and two thirds. That'll come back into play. Now we've done this three and a half. How many fourths are in three and a half? Let's do one and change this around a bit. Let's do three and a fourth and ask how many halves are in three and a fourth. Now, this is that measurement idea. And let's look at three and one fourth with the pieces here. So here are my three holes. And here is a one fourth piece. Now, if you're wondering why I haven't labeled my strips or I'm even using black for the hole, please go check out the video on making a fraction kit and why I'm not labeling these holes. Now, this one is how many halves can I measure off? So this is now my measurement unit. I really don't care that it's called a one half. I'm trying to figure out how many of this size piece I can measure off. So if I measure it off, I get one, two, three, four, five, six. And then now what do I do with that? Well, just like with any, if I was measuring with a foot and I only used half of the foot, how much did I use? A half, right? If this is my measurement tool and I measure, I get to the end and I only use this much of it, how much did I use of it? A half of it. So in this case, I had two, four, six, and then I need half of my strip to finish. Okay, let me draw the picture, try it again, right? Three and one fourth, same starting picture. Okay, 
Okay, there's three and a fourth. And this time I want to know how many halves. So the kids do that. They cut it in half. So they've got those six. You see that. And then if that's my strip I've been using to measure, how much of it did I need to cover this part? I need half of it. Okay. Let's try another one. Um, how about two and one six divided by one half. So when I say divide by one half, I'm reading the symbols. But if you notice, I keep trying to use a conceptual language translation to help your child understand the meaning behind the symbols, not just decoding those symbols, right? Not just symbol naming, but understanding the meaning. So I would read this, how many halves are in two and a six? Now again, pause the video, pause the recording, um, and try drawing the picture yourself and see, and then start again and see if we match. I'm going to draw the two holes. If you notice, I when I'm drawing them down below, um, this lets me see the relative size of things. So I can put them up. And you'll also see me making these marks as guidelines for my 1 6. If you notice, I cut this in half and then fold into three equal pieces. When we would have done the fraction kits, they would have done the same idea. Okay, so I'm going to figure out how many of these would cover this length right here is what I'm measuring off. So I've got one, two, three, four, and then what portion of the strip did I need to use to cover that bit? One third? Yep, one third. So I have four of these halves, and then I need a third of the last measurement tool. Okay? So I hope that gives you some idea of how we divide mixed numbers by fractions and that early understanding, just developing that understanding, using our models for divisions, using the idea that I can think of it as separating into equal groups, partitioning, or I can think of measuring off or pulling off equal groups. You might have heard your child using that kind of language and then they did whole number division. And we just are extending that into fraction. But I'm measuring off how many halves, right? Measuring off versus separating into equal groups. Both ideas developed when they first are introduced to division, usually in third grade, and developing that understanding, and then we get them into fraction division. So again, I hope that helps. I hope this makes sense with the measurement. Try some more, see how it starts to feel. If you notice, I in some ways save steps because the way I was taught to do this, I would have had to change this to an improper fraction, multiply by the reciprocal. I would get a fraction that was improper, right? Because I would have to remember to multiply numerators, multiply denominators, and quite often we want it rewritten as a mixed number. So we've had to do some division again. Whereas when I think of this initial problem, how many halves are in one and a half? I could have told you three without drawing anything. I can kind of picture it. Even if I had the circular pizza idea, I had one and a half pizzas left, how many halves of pizzas could we separate out, right? Three people could each eat a half of pizza. So you can picture that, visualize that. And a lot of what we're trying to do to help your child understand the math, not just remember the procedures, is use those visual images then use algebraic thinking to help them to come up with those rules, come up with the algorithms that we used to model for them and have you just practice. We want them to go beyond that and understand what it looks like and why that works. Again, I hope you um, this helped. If you would, please consider subscribing again. It's really helpful to the channel. Give it a thumbs up if it was helpful. Share with others. 
Thanks so much for taking time to watch this and look in the comments below for some links to the playlist for fractions and other key um, videos available.